Welcome to the deep dive. We sift through the sources, pull out those essential bits of knowledge, um, those insights tailored just for you. Today, we're diving into something that, well, honestly, it kind of surprised us. It's happening right under our noses, really, influencing everything online, but it's largely invisible. We're talking about the hidden water cost of artificial intelligence. You hear that training and operating AI models takes millions of gallons of fresh water every year, and it just makes you think, right, what does that actually mean for places uh, communities already facing droughts. What about the environment? And you know, what are the implications for innovation, how we innovate going forward? It really is a connection most people just don't make. But it's becoming, well, incredibly important. Our mission here for this deep dive is to really pull out the key insights from the sources you've shared with us to help you understand this unseen link, this um, significant tie between our digital world and you know our planet's most vital resource. Okay, so... To start getting our heads around this, this thirst, we need to talk about where AI actually lives, physically, data centers. These aren't just like abstract clouds, they're massive buildings just packed with powerful servers. Basically the physical brain of modern AI. Every time you ask Siri or Alexa a question, stream some music, generate an image, that request goes to one of these places. And the unavoidable thing is all that computing power, it generates a ton of heat. So keeping those servers cool, stopping them from, you know, overheating and crashing, that needs constant, really intense cooling. Exactly. And that cooling system, that's where water really enters the picture in a big way. Some places use direct water cooling, sure. But even the ones using these huge electricity guzzling air conditioning systems, they're still indirectly consuming vast amounts of water. How's that? indirectly. Well, think about where the electricity comes from. The power plants generating all that energy, they also rely on significant water supplies for their own cooling. Ah, okay. Right. So yeah, whether it's direct or indirect, water is this absolutely essential but mostly hidden ingredient. It keeps our digital world and therefore AI up and running. So water is definitely involved, but when you say a big way or vast amounts, what kind of scale are we really looking at here? Is it is it manageable or are we talking about um, truly massive global consumption. Yeah, prepare to be, well, surprised. There were researchers, University of California, Riverside, and UT Arlington, I think it was. They estimated back in 2023 that just training GPT-3, mm. and that's a predecessor to a lot of the AI we use now. Right, like an earlier version. Exactly. Training that alone used roughly 700,000 liters of clean, fresh water. 700,000 liters? Wow. How much is that, like, in real terms? To give you a sense, it's about what 300 U.S. households would use. Not in a day, but in an entire month. Okay, wow. For one model training session, that really puts it in perspective. But that's the training part. What about just using it day to day, asking it questions? That's where the numbers just they stack up incredibly fast. There's one study suggesting that just, say, three to five prompts to an AI. Like asking it a few questions. Yeah, exactly. That could use as much water as filling a standard water bottle, you know, about 500 milliliters. Okay, that sounds small. But, but then multiply that. Millions, maybe billions of people interacting with AI systems every single day. It adds up. The cumulative effect is enormous. Hmm. And then look at the companies themselves. Google reported for 2022 uh, 5.6 billion gallons of water used for its data centers and offices globally. Billion with a B. Billion. Yeah. And Microsoft reported over 1.7 billion gallons in that same time frame. So this isn't just like a little bit more water use. It feels like a fundamentally different kind of demand. It scales like crazy, exponentially even, not like older industries and maybe without the same public scrutiny. That's it, exactly. That's the challenge. <laughs> AI is expanding so fast into almost everything. These numbers, they're only going up. So the critical question isn't just if there's enough water full stop. It's whether our current ways of using resources can actually scale sustainably yeah. with this kind of exponential AI growth. It's um, it's something needing attention right now. Which brings us to this other dimension too, the ethical one, frankly. These data centers, they often get built in rural places or sometimes areas already stressed for water. Why is that? Well, often land is cheaper there and maybe the regulations are a bit looser, less oversight. Right. There was that example, Microsoft's data center in West Des Moines, Iowa. Mm -hmm. It used something like 11 million gallons of water in just one month during the summer. And that was right when the area was experiencing severe drought conditions. Yeah. You just have to imagine being a farmer there, right? Watching your crops suffer while millions of gallons are going to cool servers next door. That's the core of the conflict, isn't it? You have local farmers, residents, the ecosystem itself. They all need that same water. 
and they find themselves competing, directly competing with these huge tech giants, often without much say or maybe even knowing how much water is really being used. It's like digital demand versus local sustainability. Precisely. And it highlights this, um, this real power imbalance between global tech operations and the local communities hosting them. It feels like this whole issue has just exploded recently. Why now? What's pushed it into the spotlight besides just AI getting bigger? Well, the timing is, it's pretty stark, actually. This AI boom is happening right alongside another huge global crisis, climate change. Right. More droughts, more water scarcity. Exactly. Droughts are getting more frequent, more severe, water scarcity. It already affects over 2 billion people around the world. So you've got this booming industry, AI, putting massive new pressure on water supplies that are already strained, already shrinking in many like, places. It's like a double whammy. It is. It puts this dual pressure on infrastructure, on ecosystems. And if we don't manage it carefully, it really risks making environmental stress much worse in already fragile parts of the world. That's, yeah, that's a pretty sobering picture. But okay, let's shift gears slightly. It's not all bad news, hopefully. I know there are solutions being worked on. Companies are making pledges. Mm -hmm. Microsoft, you mentioned their water use, but they've also pledged to be water positive by 2030, meaning they want to replenish more water than they use. That's right. And Google and Meta, they've made similar promises. Okay. So are these just nice sounding promises, PR maybe, or is there actual substance behind them? Real changes happening? No, there's definitely substance. There are real technological strides being made and strategic shifts too. Mm -hmm. Companies are developing uh, closed loop water systems. These recycle water mul multiple times within the data center, cutting down overall consumption drastically. Okay. Recycling the water. Yeah. And then there's liquid immersion cooling. What's that? It's where they actually submerge the servers directly into a special non-conductive liquid coolant. It's proving way more efficient thermally than just blowing cold air over them. Interesting. So tech solutions, what about location? That's the other piece. More strategic decisions about where to build, putting new data centers in naturally cooler climates, for instance, mm. or locating them near abundant water sources where the draw has less impact. Mm -hmm. It's really a move towards more uh, intentional design thinking about the environmental footprint from the start. So there are promising technologies, there are commitments, but the big question I guess is, will it be enough? Enough to actually keep pace with AI's explosive growth sustainably? Or is it like, you know, trying to plug a leak in a dam that's about to burst? And maybe even more importantly for people listening, what can you actually do about this as just, you know, a curious citizen? And that's really where the power lies, I think. Mm -hmm. It starts with just being mindful, perhaps. Every time you interact with an AI, whether it's a simple prompt or streaming something, there's an unseen resource cost. Being aware isn't about stopping using it, not at all. It's more about um, intentionality, understanding the connection. Intentionality, yeah, that makes sense. And what about beyond just our own clicks? Holding the big companies accountable. Absolutely critical. Mm -hmm. Demand transparency. Ask the questions. Support the companies that are actually open about their environmental impact, the ones that provide verifiable data on their sustainability efforts. If we, as consumers, as users, don't ask, they won't feel the same pressure to be upfront about it. Right. Make it part of the conversation. Exactly. And then there's the local angle. Conserving water in your own home, your own community. That actually strengthens the connection to these bigger global resource challenges. It makes it feel more real. And finally, maybe the most direct way, engage in policy discussions, decisions about where data centers get built, how water is allocated locally. Those things matter hugely. Be informed, get involved in your community if you can. So it sounds like the goal isn't about stopping AI, stopping progress. It's more about steering it, reshaping it. Precisely. It's about guiding innovation responsibly, ethically making sure that as this powerful technology advances, it does so in a way that respects our planet's limits, you know, not at the expense of them. Okay, so let's picture this for a second. Imagine an AI system, one that maybe powers essential things, hospitals, schools, whatever, but also one that actively helps solve global challenges like climate change or disease, and does all of that while having a minimal environmental footprint, especially with water. Does that sound like sci-fi or is that actually achievable? I think the future is absolutely possible. It's not guaranteed, but it's possible. It just requires that intentional design we talked about. It requires building sustainable infrastructure from the ground up. And it requires, really, a global ethic, mm -hmm. one that values both human progress and planetary health, seeing them as linked, not opposed. Mm -hmm. The future of AI isn't just about how smart the algorithms get. It's really about 
how responsibly the whole ecosystem grows yeah. within the Earth's actual boundaries. Hmm. So maybe the next time you interact with an AI, whether it's, I don't know, generating a funny image or planning your commute, just take a moment. Reflect on those invisible resources humming away behind the screen. Curiosity, like we said, is powerful. It drives innovation, sure, but it also holds it accountable. So what stands out to you? How do we make sure progress doesn't end up depleting our most vital resources? Something to think about.